As Israel fights with Hamas in the heart of Gaza City, my next guest is warning of the challenges that the Israeli forces will face. General Joseph Votel is the former commander of the U.S. Central Command and U.S. Special Operations. He helped lead the fight against ISIS in Iraq and Syria. General, it is so great to have you and your expertise here. Um, it's you, great to be with you. You've been inside. You've actually been inside these tunnels near the Israeli border. What exactly are these, these IDF forces up against here? Well, the, the tunnels that uh, that I have been in are actually were actually Lebanese Hezbollah tunnels in the northern part of the country. But uh, the point I think is the same. These are generally well constructed. When you when you are able to climb down in them, you get a sense of of the robustness of the permanence that uh, with which they are installed. And clearly, they're using uh, you know modern technology to to do this. Uh, and so they're they're built in a way that they can withstand. Um, strikes from the surface and, and require an extraordinary amount of work to uh, to overcome. And of course, they provide a distinct tactical advantage for the forces that control them, allowing you to, to command control, to store supplies, and, and more importantly, shift forces around underground away from the surveillance of of, uh, of others who might try to be trying to interdict that. Right. These aren't just tunnels to crawl through and get someplace. They're living quarters. They're bunkers. I mean, does Hamas basically live down there? Well, I would imagine some of their uh, some of their uh, leadership probably does probably spends an extraordinary amount of time out of there. Yes, you're right. It's not just passageways. It's it's actual underground rooms where they are storing supplies, where they conduct command and control, where they perform medical uh, activities on some of their fighters. They they do this underground, and uh, uh, so these are these are sophisticated networks. They're not just uh, crawl tunnels that right. uh, that. Uh, that exist. You also have the added complexity of these 242 hostages who are all believed to be spread out throughout these tunnels. And, and in fact, you think that Hamas may be using them as sh human shields um, if once the IDF gets close. Well, sure. I, th I think uh, I think the hostages are valuable to Hamas uh, at this point. They will use them for information exploitation. They'll uh, they'll uh, position them at places that uh, complicate the. Uh, Israeli uh, offensive scheme and maneuver here. So, yeah, no, no doubt they, they, they is, these hostages are valuable to Hamas, and we should expect, because of the type of organization they are, a terrorist organization, that they will, uh, that they will expose hostages to danger um, uh, throughout all of this. And you say Hamas is also very deliberately baiting the IDF to kill Palestinian civilians by embedding and putting headquarters underneath hospital, as hospitals are right next to or underneath schools, even using ambulances to move their fighters and weapons, even sharing ambulances with wounded patients. Yeah, so in, in every way, Hamas is entrenched in, uh, in, uh, in, in life in Gaza. Uh, they build their tunnels under, under populated areas where people live and work. Uh, they fire missiles from uh, the vicinity of refugee camps and hospitals. Uh, they uh, make use of civilian structures to conduct their operations. So they are completely embedded in this, which I think makes, uh, makes this extraordinarily difficult, difficult for the Israeli Defense Forces or any force that would that would fight against a, uh, an enemy like this. We certainly saw this uh, during our campaign against ISIS in places like Mosul, where ISIS was embedded in into the very uh, urban structures where people uh, work and live and and um, and conduct their daily lives, and and that makes this extraordinarily difficult for any military force that operates there. But I think in Mosul, the civilians had the opportunity to leave if they could and if they wanted to. Um, in, in Gaza, uh, the civilians don't, right? No, that's that's true. We we saw instances where ISIS prevented uh, prevented civilians from from moving. But you know, to to the bigger point, there are some lessons learned from our experience against ISIS that I think are applicable here. It's really important for humanitarian planning and for close collaboration between military forces and those international and other agencies that are responsible for. Uh, for uh, you know, providing the humanitarian aid, it's really important when uh, when Israel clears through these areas, or any military force clears through an urban area and, and, and rids it of, of enemy forces, to get somebody in charge of that of that area. Usually, a local, uh, some type of local authority who can begin to restore order and and be be accountable to the people. And thanks. 
so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.